I'm here on Buffalo Pound Lake, downstream of Lake Diefenbaker in the Capel River uh, system. We're interested in algal blooms in the lake in particular because they create challenges for water treatment processes and they can be linked to uh, production of toxins and are frequently linked to uh, problems of taste and odor associated with the drinking water. We also do some work understanding winter processes. In shallow systems in the prairies, winter is really important, not only because it tends to be a, a significant portion of the year, but because it can really influence the biogeochemistry of the rest of the year and in doing so, the water quality. We're working with the water treatment utility and they've been studying the lake and have created a long-term database for over 30 years. So we're able to use that 30 years of chemistry data and algal data to really understand uh, some of the changes in the lake that have happened through wet and dry periods and some of the trajectories of, of change in the lake. We instrumented this site with a water quality monitoring buoy. So we have a weather station located on top and that's really important because really calm, warm conditions tend to be when we have the, the most significant problems with algal blooms. And then below the water surface, we have a series of sensors. And what these sensors do is uh, they transmit through a, a cellular modem within the buoy. And every one or two hours, it uploads to the internet. And then that data is available both to the researchers, so we know when we need to get out on the lake and sample to understand the blooms. And it's also available to the water treatment plant. What we learn about the water quality here gives them a few hours notice for uh, what, what they'll be seeing in the plant shortly. Our work, I think, will really help improve the management of the lake as well because the flows into the lake are controlled and uh, there are plans to take a lot more water out of the lake, so increase the flow through the system. And by looking at the long-term data as well as our buoy data, we'll be able to understand um, some of the potential effects of pushing more water through the lake um, or uh, conditions, drier conditions, where the water stays in the lake for longer. This is a really great site for grad training and research. Um, in part because we link to so many partners, so the work that our students and researchers are doing really help inform the operations of the water treatment plant, and a lot of students really like to see that applied nature of their research. The instrumentation we have on the lake is uh, really advanced and provides us with almost instantaneous data. And then the final aspect that I think is really appealing is opportunities to collaborate with other researchers. So for example, we're tied into other researchers within the province, within the University of Saskatchewan, and the Global Lakes Ecological Observatory Network. We're in one of the lab facilities for the Global Institute for Water Security here, and this is where we bring samples back to process after we're in the field. Um, here we run a variety of chemical analyses, many of which we run on our discrete chemical analyzer. Uh, we can also run samples for gas analyses, greenhouse gas analyses. Uh, we calibrate much of our field-based instrumentation here, and then we also run a number of different types of experiments. Um, for example, looking at uh, the effects of different nutrient concentrations on algal growth and algal odor production. Helen had this advertised um, to study a long-term data set, um, which is quite rare in um, phytoplankton ecology, particularly um, the detail of the species that has been measured by the Buffalo Pound Water Treatment Plant. It's quite impressive. In the data, we've witnessed quite an abrupt change in the phytoplankton community in Buffalo Pound, and that coincides with the, the, the odour problem. Um, to part of investigating this, we've isolated um, one of the species from the lake, and um, we're currently running this, these experiments to um, measure the effect of nitrate concentration on production of odour by this organism. Hopefully with these experiments plus some modelling um, and some ecological theory we can explain why this has happened and then in the future management can use this result to develop management plans. In terms of the long-term goals of the lake, there's a lot of interest from the water treatment plant in keeping the instrumentation active uh, in the lake because they're able to use the data that we generate in adapting their treatment processes um, every day. This is really a project that uh, links to a number of different themes of the Global Institute. So um, this work really links to both water and health, uh, drinking water treatment and climate change because we know these harmful algal blooms that drive a lot of the challenges for the water treatment plant are increasing in frequency um, in part we believe as a, as a result of climate change. They're also very strongly linked to uh, nutrients so that again links back to the land and how we're managing the land and how we're managing our wastewaters in affecting the nutrient loads uh, that reach the lake.